This is the evening of June the 10th, 1992, and uh, we are here at the Hoover's and uh, watching the... The green leaves come to fruition uh, from the bare uh, trunks and the bare limbs of the past season. But we have never doubted uh, the creativity, uh, the constant creativity of what appears as uh, the dead season when nothing active, nothing of growth, nothing of beauty appeared on what appeared as to be the dead limbs, of the dead trees. It wasn't that they were dead. It was that they were resting to be prepared to receive the wealth of foliage, that green stuff. <laughs> and the system of our own creating has given us the most incredible octaves in which to realize the various intervals involved in becoming what we really are. And some of those octaves and intervals have appeared as our seasons, the intervals and our seasons, because we look to our mm, what is within is, is without, and what is above is below, and what is below is above, and what is without is within, all this, uh, this type of thing, you know. Uh, we can use all these types of expression. However, we come to this consideration, which we call the great depression that we seem to be in. Uh, we never consider the winter or the, leaves lo the trees losing their leaves as a depression. And, um, and we never consider the winter months uh, when the trees are bare as uh, the trees having lost every green thing they possessed. <laughs> Why uh, should we, uh, in our uh, thought organized and manifested life stream, ever consider those moments when nothing seems to be happening? to be devoid of the incredible spirit of newness and fecundity. I can't see Pam. Um, um, uh, other, maybe she can move over just a bit. That's better. And, uh, um, uh, yes, and that's good. And. Um, uh, and yet we feel the depression is something that has come upon us by means that are totally, totally blamed upon a handful of people. And perhaps it has. But we don't have to believe uh, that the power rests in such control. If the beauty of the tree is in its foliage, and if its barrenness and scant beauty were believed to be true, no one ever would look to a new spring. Mm -hmm. And the reason it is a new time is because everything bursts from the cocoon of doubt and expectation. 
when you drive through the desert and you look at the various trees in the desert and some of them are so dead some are finding the leaves appearing very soon others appear to be dead say, oh no no that tree isn't dead don't cut it down it just is waiting for its rhythm to appear to be manifested as the new foliage. Mm -hmm. I wonder how often we are entering willingly into that stream of cutting down our successes by allowing ourselves to be whittled down by the aggressive thoughts that would cause us to want to uproot all that we have done thinking it was dead just because the foliage hasn't appeared as the selfishness and the narcissistic control of situations has tried to inculcate by their propaganda. Mm -hmm. If the dead season were really dead, the tree would never be filled with such newness that a whole new print job would come out in the spring. <laughs> it's never counterfeit wealth. It's the wealth that is inherent with promise. It's the wealth that is inherent with the knowingness that you can't believe the appearance if you expect to see a new spring. Mm -hmm. And you know very well what appeared to be the unmanifested time of the formal gown of nature it is being stitched and nurtured and woven within the root system of life's tree. And this is exactly what is happening in the world today. But we are falling for the scatteredness of the chemical situation which has been induced to cause men and women to find it difficult to focus because of the bombardment of vibratory frequencies that are diametrically opposed to the manifestation of unlimited wealth. Wealth is supposed to be our natural inheritance and it isn't supposed to be just in thought and brilliance of thought structures appearing recognized with doctorates. <coughs> They're usually glorified blinkers and uh, the need for constant uh, souls of granite to uh, be able to withstand the imbalanced training existing in so many of the so-called leaders and people prominent in the world of commerce, finance, and art. The artists are forever having to delve within their own pockets that are empty if they are creative. Your pockets are always full of last year's rake breaking if you don't share. You stuff what you have gained from the year, previous year's harvest into your pockets so that you will always have these withering green pieces <laughs> crumpled and worn and dried out because you keep them from circulating. Remember the tree knows better. The tree drops its substance mm -hmm. 
appearing as the enriched chlorophyll leaf and restores its system so that there is a constant cycle of renewing and nourishment. Why in God's name are we so inclined to be prone? <laughs> Do you realize that seldom when you're examined are you stood up? <laughs> When you meet your date with a, a sense of destiny, you are seldom stood up if it has to do with anything that is termed remedial. You are never stood up for an appointment by an accountant, by a doctor, or by an, uh, an employer if you are in need of an, an analysis of some type so that you can ascertain uh, just which part of you is in, uh, in that state of needing um, beneficence bestowals. <laughs> we speak of wealth. Don't you, do, whoever talks about wealth? Have you ever talked to people who are scared to talk about wealth? Try it. No one wants to talk about wealth. And so what do we have? We have the refusal not only to allow what is real to manifest itself, but what is unreal to appear to be authenticated by our attention given to it. Why do you bother giving attention to the counterfeit movement? As I've often said, when you go into a bank and you talk to a teller if they can speak English today, you can ask them how they can tell a counterfeit. They don't say, well, if, well of course they might today. <laughs> I haven't talked to them. Um, they may, you may, this is perhaps why they have such long lunch hours. They're studying all the counterfeit bills. <laughs> but the, the, when people were really wise, they studied the one that was authentic. And everything that wasn't real was self-evident because it could not create. It was synthetic. It was a counterfeit. Well, you notice the counterfeits that are going on all the time. Talk about money. You should see the fit that counters wealth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People don't want to talk about wealth. <laughs> but you know, primarily, the leaves were for the healing of the nations. And what does that mean? Every leaf is a state of an aspect of being realized. When man starts to blossom, he is as a tree. From the system of root, he gleans the nutrients of life and is able to bestow upon those who witness the account of the unlimited source when man acknowledges creativity as the very evidence of the aiming of the eye. And when man says, I am that I am, he means that I am that I am. And so in the invisible, in the dark, barren branches of the invisible, 
we know that must be present for I am. And in that is being experienced the creativity of the wonder becoming the greatest engineering feat of all time. Man's ab ability to structure an edifice of thought projected form that he calls himself a human being. It is only men and women who call themselves human beings. There is no other creature on this earth that has ever called anything by name, therefore limited it, but men and women who thought they had intelligence, who thought they had intelligence. But you see, see intelligence was never thought, and that's why intelligence is so limited. Because as long as you think you, intelligence, you never have the, the total ac access to your pocket of unlimited wealth. Because it isn't intelligence that we think that is the key to your box of unlimited wealth. The box, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, intelligence is that vibration that is the silence that links what appears as a silence between two thoughts that accord sense with meaning. That is intelligence. And when you make a sentence conform to the grammatical demands of the language in which you speak, you say he speaks intelligently the language, his mother tongue. Now the key to the box is the key to your words, because the words are supposed to become the healing to the nations. And they're supposed to be as the leaves of the tree. Now this is another form of Pentecost, because I am a tree telling you about my leaves. And my leaves are constantly turning according to the centuries of man's historic tale. If the tree bears the words, then the system must be wordless. And the reason you appear to hear words is because that which is in need of verification within the realm of his own projection demands that an abstract have a corresponding identity until I am realized in that state which is inherent within the root system of the tree of life. And the box that bears the pockets of such unlimited wealth is the box of this age in which you stand, whether you're a flautist, an engineer, an architect, a pathologist, an internist, whatever your profession is in doctorhood or nursehood or in knighthood, it, it must always be realized that the service around the table is because it revolves on the axis of being that is termed principle, that is undifferentiated and uncontaminated and unfettered by any of your thought processes. Therefore, it is termed divine. Your, no matter what you think will interfere with what is. You cannot stop a tree from exuding its garment of wonder just because you think it's dead. No one can stop you from exuding your wonder and your genius just because the moment 
and your life may be the moment the forces are reorganizing themselves within your system so that you will no longer appear to be a sap under the bark of somebody else's little shack of considerations. Your mansion should be the wealthiest, the most successful. You should be the wealthiest, most successful. You should be beyond a condition, and you should beyond, be beyond any of the declensions of may or might, may have or might have been. So to heck with all the 14 declensions of the French verbs, the only verb is I am now, and that takes care of it. You don't have to do je suis, all of it. <laughs> but you see, we tend to program our experience through allowing ourselves the tenses so that they can be ameliorated by having them past or future, but seldom present. And remember, to declare wealth is to be present. Why do you think a limousine bothers so many people? Because the spirit is supposed to be poor. Some jackass hyenaed that out in the desert some one night and said, you know, if you're going to be spiritual, you're going to be poor. Well, the poor in spirit means that you, it doesn't mean that you don't have anything. It means you have everything because you have the simplicity of knowing the all-inclusive nature of oneness and the leaves appearing as the audience. Nothing but those that have allowed themselves to be raked into the gathering place where once again can bestow the wonder of their foliage. Every tree in this room has borne what is termed the world tree of wonder, and we have thought it into the confines of a human condition, limited, yes, only by our own thought. We exist as a thought condition, and that's why it can be changed. If a thought condition couldn't be changed, you would have no point of going to school. So uh, today you wonder why they go to school. That's why I'd like them all to close. Uh, I'd like to start them all over again. You know, crank the old Ford up again and get the, uh, the horses back where they belong, either in gold on your wrist or under the hood, which knows the correct speed with which to assume the road of life. A Model T was really the truth expressed regarding an idea that Ford crossed when he considered the river of judgment. Because you see, it meant that we were envisioning on a higher level immediacy and effortless being, provided we had the substance to allow it to appear. And that appeared as the cost of a vehicle that evidenced an ease with the suggestion of your continuum, which you have created in order to stabilize a passing. Your, oh God, this is so exciting. I did that. Your presence in this continuum is stabilized by the components that constitute it, otherwise it isn't. Now that doesn't mean that what is is dead. It's like the tree. The evidence not may, be, may not be immediately at hand as to the understanding of what I'm saying. So you may look at this entire uh, epistle uh, to you on these shores of time and say, what in hell is he talking about? Well, of course, that's where it is being exuded if you consider 
that you are just chips off the old block. As most people, yeah, they just a chip off his, just a chip off the old block. Well, I mean, go on, chaps. <laughs> it's much more to it than this. Mm -hmm. What we are dealing with is that type of message that allows you to perceive that creativity is the very source and wonder of your experience. And there is not one who, isn't crea who is not creative. But we are taught that we have to become creative. We are not taught that we are creative and the purpose of our education is to free us of the leaves of the past that has bound us to what is believed to be a new beginning. This is why the Word is said to have been with God and the Word was God, because that could stand in the box and bear witness to itself. And that is why this age is said that the womb of the female is going to be used less in the service of propagating the masterships, the knighthoods, than ever before. Because it is allowing a dark period to last too long for the enhanced awareness of the space-time continuum growing, encroaching upon us by our lack of creativity. This is why time is said to be running out and the fundamentalists who are concerned about what is are hoping and praying for a new appearance. But you see, what Jesus promised, what Buddha promised, what every, they never made a promise. They lived the promise. Mm -hmm. It was the people who refused it, and upon refusing it, said, I can't be raked into that bin. I've got to be able to leave the fumes of my burning and say that I will come again. Men and women don't realize that they create their own inner pyre The fundamentalists are so right in one way. There's nothing wrong with anyone's approach to existence. They just may be slower or faster according to the speed of recognition of their own divinity. No man can make you aware. The only thing that another can do is allow you to perceive that love is all there is to you. And this is what makes you such a freak which makes you such an unusual tree that you have been popularized in the books of secrecy and have been thought to be a symbolic study of the ages. But the tree of life was never fully named. If it had been, it would have never been anything but a symbol attempting to be understood. The real tr life of a tree is in the evidence of creating a foliage becoming each season so that others may perceive its wonder. This is you. This is, appears what is me. The only difference is this. When you know, you know, you know, you know, and when you think you know, you've got a believer thinking. And a believer thinking takes time. Knowing doesn't. No has the K and the now. Yes. And, and, and then what do you have? You have the ability to look at your box and to see what type of um, creature you're calling unto yourselves. Why are the arts, such as music, so important? Because they attune man 
to our harmonic presence within himself that is more real than the poundage that goes with this time-space continuum. Music lifts us beyond the gravitational field of a mental entombment. Music allows us to be freed from the gestation period of suggested might where we are termed we live and move and have our being for a time on this plane. Music is what we term the accompanying force field of harmonic agreement with what is termed the heavenly state or the divine. That is why earth is heaven, but misnamed because of our dualistic premise and the failing to translate what appears as the objective into a subjective experience. And thus, what, what is within is without, and what is above is below, and what is within must be abundance without, for I am all, and therefore everything outside is all that I am. Everything that is not as I am comes to you as the great practitioners of the wonder to give itself up. All the cancer beliefs, all the aid beliefs, all the dying beliefs come to you because you are the very presence of the nightingale that can say, flow over with the rhythm of knowing that you could not be experiencing this pain if you, in essence, were not the peaceful state becoming your divinity. Remember that. And if the patient doesn't know that and is not conscious, doesn't mean a thing. You can speak it in the silence because tel intelligence is the very force field that allows the unspoken to be perceived as a feeling commensurate with soul. You think your thoughts are, are, are not being detected. This is, this is absolutely ridiculous. They are being detected, and this is what is moving my wheels so that I appear to be talking. Because I, uh, the only difference is this. I am not saying perhaps what you think you are thinking. I am saying what you are thinking is causing me to say in order for your thinking not to get you into a jam or get a speeding ticket when you should be pacing your way in the fulfillment of the divine plan. This is what this is about. If you're going to have a wash clean, you have got to have, there's got to be an agitator somewhere. And, and it's best to do it with the all. There's not too many suds then, you know, Pam. And, and while it's happening, you know you can allow a tone to permeate the whole vestibule in which the interim of this life is being fulfilled. Do you know this life of maybe a hundred score year, hundred years, five score years, perhaps is nothing but that. And this is why there's so little of you here. This is why there's so much present in order to remind you of how little of you is here. So little of you was necessary for here. Look how little is necessary. Just this little bit for you to be a doctor or a priest. You to be a, 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 a part of the intelligentsia of, your, of whatever your belief system happens to be. Or you to be just a, an x-ray technician. And incidentally, a housewife. And incidentally, a mother, etc. These things are so little. They're so small that you can't remember them when you go to sleep. <laughs> Why do you think the prolonged one is looked for? <laughs> It's because it puts an end to your limited concept of the rhythm of the dance of life. That is what the seasons are. 
objectified for the points to the parallelism which exists in so many different octaves. The unseen and the seen, the unexperienced and the experienced, the unintelligent appearing detected by the intelligent. Why do you always appear to have the duality? In order to strengthen the fiber of your knowingness so that you can eventually leap as the grasshopper. It never considers a distance. It just leaps. It doesn't measure it. And it doesn't have some doctor to come in and measure the distance from this spot to that and then decide with a pressure on one of its legs whether or not it's got enough energy in each one of them to allow it to leap such a chasm of suggestion. Its natural impulse is to leap when the situation is obviously boredom. <laughs> Why do you do so much? Why do you keep yourself so involved with your work? It's not because you're good Samaritans. Heaven's sakes! It's not that at all. It's because you don't want to have to consider what's in the side of the pot you're making in the kiln of your own fire. When you shape a pot of clay or porcelain, it is because you are having the great fun of allowing, you say, a piece of earth to have meaning, you're an idiot. That isn't what you're shaping it for. You're allowing your students to perceive the invisible body of space. That's the only reason anything has shape, is because that which has carved the space out has allowed itself to die to having a presence. For without the body of space present, you would not perceive the form of your thought structure termed a sculpture in clay. It's the same with your architecture. I spent hours yesterday with a renowned architect, very famous one, and a brilliant one. I had a great time with him, hours. He said, I've never been so excited. Mm, you know, you can't expect to build a beautiful structure until you find out what that space where it's going to, which it's going to occupy, tells you to do with it. Otherwise, those sticks and stones will really only go up at great cost and never bear the support system of that organic structure that is invisible but contained and by what appears as your walls. The whole, this is one of the reasons so much space today is unused and businesses are going out of their offices. It's because the offices in space have not been filled with the wonder of it. They have been filled only with the commerce and finance that would support the mechanical contrivance to keep you deluded in the white slave job of being somebody else's employer while you were never considered, perhaps, a master in disguise. This is why the offices in all these great towers are so vacant. I know in Toronto they wouldn't believe it there, but of course that's the trouble. They do, that is the trouble. Belief never solves a problem. In fact, belief is at the root of all problems. It isn't believing that two and two is four, that five fades out. It's knowing. 
Because if you believe, you can always say, well, of course, there is five, because there couldn't have been the two twos there if there hadn't been somebody writing them. And that makes the fifth end, the other point unseen. <laughs> well, if that's all you are, innumerable, then we don't, I don't need to be around them. Please, let me go. <laughs> now, look. If, you, if these are all in one country, if this is all in one country, where is the standard? Is it trailing in the dust of nationalities and races and creeds? Or is it living as the wonder that is termed the prana or the breath of life, which is what allows the trees to bear leaves. If it wasn't for the breath of life, the creative spirit would not even to appearing to breathe upon the tree. This is why a tree is never still for very long. It is always evidencing the omnipresence of wind, which is what? The invisible evidence appearing as the train of the wind moving the leaves as it passes. This is what the ripple on the lake is. This is what the wave in the sea is. When you scuba dive, you know the might of omnipotence has blown those waves in the sea <laughs> very high. But when you go below the surface, the most difficult thing is to get down. Because then you're not in the turbulence. The turbulence is always on the surface approach to everything. In the depths, there's only the rhythmic wave that goes with the living body. Down a hundred feet, all you can do is see the coral. And you're, you're in neutral buoyancy, so you're swinging with any school you wish because it takes that buoyancy to achieve the level upon which you wish to swim. It's, not, it's neutral only because you're not having to go up one minute and down the next. You achieve a balance so that you can appear to be in any school enjoying it, but your present alters that school and sometimes they will move in a different direction as a result of your presence. Mm -hmm. One day we were, I was swimming, there were about a thousand uh, barracuda. Oh, small ones are only about that long. <laughs> All swimming in this incredible silver school, circling, very high, very low. And you'd swim in it, and they'd all change because of your presence. And as soon as you left it and became the observer, they went right back into their form. Mm -hmm. But it was only because it was neutral if I'd been kicking. They pro I don't know what they would have done. They would have scattered, only to reassemble beyond my kick. Perhaps it's evident, obvious that you need to kick if you wish to scatter that which isn't becoming to the buoyancy of your spirit. You need to be in agreement with that which is in agreement with your buoyancy. Therefore, you are not neutral, but you allow your presence to have the support system that allows you to move in rhythm with their movement, which may be from sense to soul. This is why the dualistic language is always permeated with several levels of meaning, because the word that is spoken must be heard in order for the one attentive to allow the vibratory frequency of the word to impinge upon 
the essence of their thought structure, the cell, and all that accompanies it into the formation of what you call the human body. Remember, the cell in essence was thought before it was formed. That's why it took so long to perceive you could see a cell because you had to realize the need of invention to look at such a deep level and perceive a rhythm that was not in any unharmonious state, but on the surface it was chaotic. A young man said the other night, well, chaos is wonderful. And of course, he loves chaos. Other his life would not be wonderful. It's chaos that gives him a meaning for living at this point. He's so brilliant. He is so brilliant. But I suggest, but go deeper, because chaos, deeper, is not chaotic at all. It's the very essence out of which comes that which must be manifested. Because it's not known. But it's on the surface where you are fooling around with ideas that really are not of the family or the school commensurate with your accepted principle of being. That you must exert your force or your kick so that you allow your presence to rescind the suggestion of that which would impinge upon the infinite possibilities of your experience and another's. Because what blesses one, blesses all. So, the story of substance is really the story of selflessness. The tree appears to die so that others who doubt may see a new spring. Is it not like the life of a form that bears a word? Why do you suppose that so many of the greats have been crucified on a tree? because when it appeared to be the structure for that which was to die, it was always the obvious appendix of the Book of Life that was written when it was grounded in the root system of being. Look to the appendix and you will find that a root didn't just, a tree just didn't grow in Brooklyn but it broke the line of that brook that you thought you had to ford when the truth had to become known as the evidence in a simple act of an object that would allow your ease with space and its continuum to be timed and termed effortless in movement from this to that. It doesn't take time to think right and the model is before you. Take it and live it and find yourself exculpated from this realm of confusion and rescind the laws of a counterfeit business and allow the creative spirit of newness and nowness to be ever um, fortifying and fructifying th your words as each missile of your life appears an, an epistle of wonder for those who would expect food from those who have walked in the light of wonder. It is only through the window of wonder that you can see the moment that is timeless. And it is in that moment that I come and go, and yet never leave home for Earth. It is the same with all of you. 
enjoy your impersonation, but allow yourself to be caught in the rapture of being and the rhapsody beyond any symbolic form of a Brahms. If anything faults, mm -hmm. and Strauss may build a structure. <laughs> do you think, if you do, use it only? for the evidence of selflessness and allow your expression to be all-inclusive love mm -hmm. under the hood of the invisible light of whatever you deem to be the ideal, the hero or heroine of your life. For if it were not so, in the beginning there never would have been the word, mm -hmm. and the word would never have been possible to have been with your ideal, if in essence you were not that. So your spiritual pockets, I hope, are empty, for you are constantly exchanging the leaves of your garnered creative might daily in order for the office of the king to be filled with the wonder that could be bestowed upon the kingdom of his might and his glory. Thus it is that world with is without end because it's a divine idea in the realm of the gestation period of those who wish to experience our realm of choice. Go sideways. and see what is before you. <laughs> Ascend and believe in the transcendental and descend and can bathe in the compassion of a knowing might. I am directionless, seasonless, but the spice of life. <laughs> Thank you. P.S. It is very important that those in Toronto and those in New York hold to the truth whichever, whatever it may be to you, for the chaos, the unbridled and un, um, immature actions that are seemingly controlling events of great significance should be, become devoid of their energy to, do, to thwart the power of achievement. And may all those who are in places of power, who have the ability to bring about a new consideration of atmospheric conditions, be, a, be struck by the light, so to speak, or shocked in such a way uh, that their bias and their selfishness may be rescinded so that this great planet can continue for a few more years. Order must be restored to the deep tissue of being so that man can see that the tissue is so thin between this dimension and the next.
her greatest aid is love that sees not selfishness of sex or the eroticism that comes with having or not having or giving or not giving and the neurotic conditions that follow. We need to see the all-encompassing nature of love that frees so that there is no offense or offender before the High Court of Appeal. For I have come to judge righteous judgment and not to cast a verdict upon the strivings of a fettered soul in a condition that should have moved beyond the confines of such a dismal creed of person, place, and thing. We should be living a cosmic awareness so that the universe and this world, this world can be given back to the arms of love and the universe can be seen to be our grandest concept worn in the ground of restoring the lost to the cause of being and the cause of being found in the jubilation becoming I am. So it's great fun to be here where the space is so gracious and the walls echo the wonder of us being together. The only purpose of a wall is to allow the harmonic structure within it to continue to sound within its own echoness. The reason the flute sound is so magnificent is because it has a tube to magnify the inaudible impulse to sing. Mm -hmm. The shorter the tube, the shorter the duration of life in sound. Are you going to shorten your tube by being selfish? Or are you going to have it such a length that someone will say, oh boy, it passed through the reeds, but my God, it's resonating even on the grand, on the king of instruments, why wouldn't it in the symphony of soul? You see, what you're dealing with are pure, is purely symbolic language. And yet on one level, it is totally viable. Mm -hmm. But on another level, it's intoxicating. <laughs> <laughs> and on another level, <clears throat> it's the most swinging experience you know. <laughs> and on another level, you literally fly. And on another level, you literally, literally drop your confetti. And on another level, they'll say, what was that? It appeared for a moment like a hutek upon the horizon of my perception, but left a trail of incandescent wonder. Hmm. Aren't you with a strange man? <laughs> <laughs>